Hello, everyone. Hier ist Pascal von Hello everyone, this is Pascal from Neutrality Studies, today again in German, because I want to share with you a rather astonishing contribution, broadcasted on ARD, Germany's largest national broadcasting network. Those of you who follow my channel here or in English know that I am very critical of mainstream media. But when something good and especially critical comes from there, it deserves our attention all the more. On April 18th, NDR published a well-researched report on German arms deliveries to Israel. This is not only surprising because of the very Israel-critical tone of the video, but also because, at the same time, Nicaragua has dragged Germany to the International Court of Justice in The Hague for exactly this act. On April 30th, the court, unfortunately, held that it will not impose interim measures against Germany and against the arms deliveries. But the case is not closed, and the question of Germany's complicity in the crimes of the Israeli army in the Gaza Strip will continue. A good part of the information on Germany's arms deliveries we have thanks to the request of the Bundestag member Sevim Dagdelen, who also appears in the report. I thank NDR for its permission to redistribute this report, unchanged, and to translate it. And here is the report. Where did I get myself into? Chancellor Olaf Scholz might think. Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu was considered a democratic value partner, a bulwark against terrorism. And now, after more than six months of war, what's left is a pile of rubble. Gaza turned into a landscape of ruins, as research shows, also with German weapons. October 7th. The militant Palestinian Hamas carries out a massacre in Israel, taking hundreds of hostages. Scholz's reaction, unconditional support for the Netanyahu government, including with weapons. Our solidarity is not limited to words. I have asked Prime Minister Netanyahu to stay in close contact and inform us of any support needs. This applies, for example, to the care of the wounded. But we will also promptly examine and grant other requests for support from Israel. The retaliatory strike against Hamas. The federal government supports the campaign in Gaza. Their reasoning, the right to self-defense. Are German weapons also in use? A video from the Israeli army. The text displayed says, first combat deployment of the Saar 6 Corvette. The ship was built in Kiel by ThyssenKrupp. Here, the Israeli army proudly documents how the Corvette from Germany bombards Gaza. The federal government has always supplied weapons and military equipment to Israel. But after October 7th, the export permits skyrocketed. This list from the Bundestag shows which categories of weapons were approved in 2023. Total value of these arms exports to Israel, 326 million euros. Information that came out upon request by the Member of Parliament Sevim Dagdelen to the federal government. She draws a clear conclusion from it. After the terrible attack by Hamas, the federal government has massively increased arms exports to Israel. We have seen a tenfold increase in arms exports. This suggests that there was not much deliberation, not much examination, but rather immediate and direct approval was given. The range of German armaments is broad. Many tanks in Israel run on German diesel engines for the Markava 4 tank. After the USA, Germany is the second most important arms supplier, as Andreas Krieg from the renowned King's College in London knows. The military expert also advises the British government. The backbone of German-Israeli relations is this security cooperation. Naturally, when you look at the Israeli Navy, there are still German ships, submarines, and corvettes that are a large and important part. When you look at the components of the individual weapon systems, you repeatedly see medium-sized German companies supporting Israel with tank engines and so on. Even with shoulder arms. This one is built in the Siegerland area. 
The manufacturer's promotional video demonstrates martially what the RGW-90 bazooka, also called Matador, is particularly well suited for urban combat. The Matador is an interesting individual system because it is really supplied from Germany and also plays an important role in the urban warfare we are now seeing in Gaza. This bazooka looks damn similar to the one from the Siegerland. We presented the films to the manufacturer. No information. Obviously, it's the Matador. This video was apparently uploaded to the net by Israeli soldiers themselves, music included. The federal government admits, in 2023, it approved the delivery of 3,000 units, according to number 37 of the war weapons list. In German, 3,000 bazookas like the Matador. This is not an indirect intervention in the war, but a relatively direct intervention in the war. And at least Germany, the federal government, should ask questions. To what extent is the Matador being used? Where is it being used? And why is it being used? And what clear rules exist? exist for soldiers when they use it. The federal government says it has no knowledge of whether and how German weapons are being used in the Gaza war. No knowledge. No shared responsibility. That seems to be Schultz's stance, even when reports of the campaign and the many civilian casualties are in every newspaper. Israel Israel is a democratic state with very humanitarian principles guiding it. And therefore, one can be sure that the Israeli army will also adhere to the rules that arise from international law in what it does. I have no doubt about that. Others already have. The Israeli army has now turned large parts of the densely populated Gaza Strip into a pile of rubble. Is it a war against Hamas? or against Gaza as a whole. The Air Force is conducting thousands of strikes. How are the targets chosen? Military expert Krieg believes reports are accurate that the selection of targets is highly automated. So, it is controlled by computers. Such a thing has never existed in warfare at the operational and strategic level, where all different data flows come together and where a computer decides afterwards whether a target is to be destroyed or not. Simple numbers games are played, where it is said, this target is worth 25 dead civilians, and the computer says, attack. This has led to enormous destruction but also to enormously high casualty figures, because casualties were accepted, especially women and children. The targets are selected by the computer, but the bombs that are then dropped on the targets are not so intelligent. The bombs do not come from Germany, but from America, and are often dumb, also because it is cheaper. The Israeli army has used a lot of so-called dumb bombs, so dumb bombs that are not guided by laser or GPS, meaning they are simply dropped from the plane. It is not exactly known where they will land. These dumb bombs have a warhead that weighs up to 2,000 pounds. Such explosive power is not used in an urban context. But they did it. They used it in an urban context. Exactly, and that is a war crime. A serious accusation. But there is increasing evidence for it. This video apparently shows people in Gaza being killed from the air. The Israeli army says they could have been terrorists, workers from a humanitarian organization killed in their cars. Netanyahu says that just happens in war. The details of the operation are usually unclear, but what is indisputable is, German weapons are also involved in the Gaza war. Given the fact that the Germans officially supply weapons to Israel, I see a complicity of German politics in this fatal situation in Gaza. Arif Hajjaj is a native Palestinian and opponent of Hamas. Many are interested in his lectures in Germany because he is familiar with German Middle East policy. 
He was an advisor and Arabic translator at the Foreign Office for more than 30 years, advising Genscher, Schmidt and Kohl. Compared to them, today's leaders have lost courage and clarity, Hajjaj believes. Anyone acting even remotely rational would have expected the Germans to have stopped arms shipments to Israel at this stage. But they haven't done that. They continue to deliver weapons. Everyone who supplies to Israel, everyone who supports the Israeli army, especially in terms of material and financial support, shares responsibility for how these weapon systems, how this support is used on the ground. Germany cannot absolve itself of this responsibility. The Germans must also speak plainly with their friends, and Israel is among Germany's best friends. They must finally speak plainly. But if one lacks courage, then one beats around the bush. That helps neither German interests, nor does it help Israeli interests. Responsibility, complicity. The federal government continues to supply weapons and says that it expects Israel to comply with international law. The matter is probably already uncomfortable for Olaf Scholz. He shows this at his most recent meeting with Netanyahu, but he simply dismisses him. The longer the war lasts and the more the number of civilian casualties rises, the more desperate the situation of the people in Gaza becomes, the more urgent the question becomes. Can the important purpose justify such high costs? Our consideration. We have always been guided by the thought of reducing civilian casualties, and we will continue to do so. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.